Hi! It's a Saturday afternoon and I find myself on my own and feeling a bit sad. So I thought what I'd do is come up here and just do a quick watercolour painting. And I came up with the idea of using some honesty as inspiration. So I'm going to use this as a, a guide um, just to talk about a few things. And I've been looking at the grief wheel, which you can access information about online. And I'm going to use the grief wheel, which is a basically a circular structure with the um, stages of grief written onto it so you can read it and absorb it and think about it and all that sort of thing so but i'm going to use instead of a circle of grief i'm going to use the honesty um, because i think this situation involves a lot of honesty and if you can be more honest with yourself all the better for it i'm just going to grab a special brush just one second, I need to get a rigger brush and I don't think I've got one actually, thinking about it. Anyway, um, if you have got a rigger brush that would come in really useful, but if you haven't, don't worry. I've got a bit of a dirt, this is also a good opportunity to use up all the paint on your dirty palettes like I've got here. Um, because I'm going to use a series of greys and blues and purples and they just happen to be in my palette so let's use them so rather than going into your main pans use the stuff that's on your palette wet it down again this is just watercolour you can't do this with acrylic once it's dry it's dried um, okay so the first thing we'll do is we'll just put a stem in just going to add a little bit of black into that okay so I'm just going to do a central stem and if you press with the whole length of the brush I hope you can see that you'll get a thicker stem down the bottom and then if you start to lift up your brush so it's more vertical like this you'll find that the brush stroke becomes thinner. So the more you lift it, the thinner, because you're not using the whole length of the hair, you see. So that will give you a finer tip, as you can see with that. Okay, and then we've got various projections off of each side of the stem so I'm using a finer detailed brush for this because I want them to be fine but I'm using it in the same process pressing with the whole length of the brush at the where it connects to the stem and then as I come outwards I'm going to lift so that the line becomes thinner if you need it to be a bit thicker there then just press the brush down again and same with the ones that are projecting from this part of the stem press so it's thicker at the base you might have some bent stems you might have stems that cross one another like that so keep going until you've got as many branches as you need like that Do some on this side as well. Ideally twist your work but if you're like me and you've got it stuck down then just oops that's a bit thick never mind let's put a thicker stem there then so if you've made it a bit thick you can always go back in and thicken that stem up all the way down and then again thicken that bit needs to be a bit thicker at the base I think like that okay and then some more projections have some 
of the projections going off the sheet of paper. It makes for a more dynamic composition if you do. I'm going to put a few of these on, but I'm not going to put them all on because I want to put some of them on afterwards because some of them will overlap. So just be aware of that. So I'm just doing the, the stem bits. OK, so the next thing, so you've created almost like a tree, really. The next thing is to do the circles. So for that, you need quite a lot of paint. You might want to mix in a bit of purple or a bit of green or a bit of blue, but essentially it's a tinted gray color. You might vary those colors, put a bit of green in there maybe, but make sure that you add a bit of black into it to darken it up. That's that purple, pinky color there. So we've got a sort of pinky color, a greeny color and a gray color and we might use them all. So now it's just a matter of building up some circles on the ends of these stems. So just paint in your circles. You can only see the bottom of that one. Maybe pick up a different colour. Put the circles down they will vary in shape and size so don't worry too much about the shapes that you're creating as long as they're sort of oval circular shapes we won't go far wrong vary where you put the colors down so if you've got some purple and some green then Dot them about in different places rather than doing them all in one spot. So I've gone back to the grey now. Maybe have some that are slightly on the side so they would be more that shape rather than full circles. Mm. One more, I think. I, will, I think I'll put this one here. Now, when we come to overlap, I just overlapped that one. And you can see it's bleeding into there because it's still wet. So if you've got a hairdryer at this stage, start to dry it off. So once they become a little bit drier, then you can start to add more circles. I'm just going to re-stick that. The, um, the heat tends to release the masking tape. Okay, so back in with your other colours. Go to the areas that are a bit darker. Now, first of all, what you do need to do is you need to add more stems. So take that colour that you mixed and add in the odd stem. There are some that I've missed, but I'm going to paint over those in a minute. But I want to create some layers now. So I'm going to add some that overlap into one another. I think we could probably do one there. Okay. So with your big brush again, take your colour and you can overlap them. And because these Honesty seed heads are transparent, they will take the overlapping. So you'll see some of the stem through, you'll see some of the other um, 
seed heads through and so on. So just keep going, building those heads up, adding them in where you've put those extra stems, maybe adding them in over the top of doubles, you know, like that. Let's put a little bit more colour into that one so that it sits on top of the other one. There we go. And you can just keep working. I quite like these patches that form. So just go with the magic that happens with a watercolour painting. I'm going to put another one there, like that. Have we missed any? No, I don't think we have. Right, so the next stage is to add the seeds. Okay, once you've got enough on the steep plants there, um, seed heads should I say, take a small brush and you're going to go for something uh, brown in tone. So we're going to take a bit of brown. I've got a bit of burnt umber here, but you need it to be quite thick. So put it somewhere on your palette away from the other colours and then add some black into that. And that's about the right colour really. I might just put a touch of purple in there. Okay, so we're going to work into some of these heads um, while they're still wet. So the process is just add a few dots in on the wet ones first just because it's nice to have a contrast of some wet in what they call wet in wet so this is wet paint on top of wet a wet surface so dot those in on top of anything you've still got that's wet you can see how much they disperse so if you want to make them stronger then just add a little dot more paint on top okay now the next ones are the clearer ones and these are the ones i want to talk about so for each section you choose part of the grief wheel so section one is about loss and um, obviously you can pick appropriate sized or shaped honesty seed heads to represent the loss so i'm going to go for this one here it's quite still quite fuzzy the whole situation with loss it's large um so it feels huge still even though it's a month ago since my mother died i still feel like it's quite a an enormous issue in my life at the moment so i'm going to leave that with loss then you go into shock and again that's quite um a large part of what i'm dealing with at the moment so shock but that shock has diminished slightly so i'm going to choose um this one up here and you know those feelings of numbness and denial so I'm going to put a dot on for each one of these um, situations. So numbness has, has receded slightly. Uh, denial, I'm not really sure whether I've been in that or not. I can't work it out. Um, this out within shock you have outbursts. I've not really had any of those. Um, I'm not really an outburst type of person really so I haven't really experienced that part of shock um, and then uh, there's things like weight loss um, which I have I've lost a little bit of weight um, but that was just probably down to the fact that I had no appetite so and also it's a very busy part of um, your life so you know you're kept busy organizing funerals and things like that so you know that doesn't aid the ability to eat so 
you know, you do end up losing a little bit of weight. So the next stage is protest. So within that, um, there are several actions. So I'm going to use this one as protest. There's um, increased shock. So it might be that that shock part of grief would increase. So you would become more shocked and shut down maybe. Um, preoccupation with the thoughts of the deceased. Yes, that's quite large. So I'm going to represent that as quite a large seed. So I've, there's been a lot of thought about my mother. And also I lost my dog. So there's been a lot of thought about my dog too. So in there we've got preoccupation with thoughts of the deceased. Then there's anger. Not a great deal of anger but some. So a bit smaller. Um, then within all within this protest there's yearning. So that is yearning after the person that you've lost, wishing they were still here. And that's been quite a large part of my grief process. Okay. So the next part is disorganisation. And I wasn't really sure what they meant by this, but I'm going to put that down by lost by here because this whole area is really disorganised and confused. So I'm going to put that down here. So disorganisation, within that you've got um, decreased socialisation. So yes, I haven't really seen very many people since the funeral. Um, I've wanted to sort of cope with my loss on my own. I've got my family around me, um, but I've given myself a bit of time to um, grieve alone. So I haven't seen many people. Um, loss of interest. Yeah, that's quite large. So within that, I assume they mean um, interest in just general day to day things things that you would normally do so yeah they um i haven't done much other than do these grief paintings and try and keep up with my work but apart from that that's about as much as i can manage um increased loneliness so um i haven't really felt lonely sort of yeah not really lonely not in that way anyway. I've missed other people, you know, people that I saw around the funeral and things like that, but not really loneliness. I'm quite happy in my own company. Um, confusion. Mm. Not much of that going on. Not really confused about the situation. Even though my mother did die in um, unusual circumstances, but, you know, it's fairly clear to me what happened. Um depression hmm a little bit you know i think everybody suffers from depression anyway um so to accept that there would be an increase in that within this grieving period is um acceptable withdrawal again withdrawal from not seeing people maybe not doing as much stuff yeah definitely apathy yeah things that are very normal day to day probably don't see as seem as important as they normally would do um so a feeling of unreality so yeah being in a sort of twilight zone kind of looking down on things that are happening seeing people doing normal day to day things and not really feeling anything um, towards that carrying on. Okay, so that is disorganisation. The next one, next section on the circle of grief is reorganisation. Oh no, hang on. Um, I missed one out, which was deterioration, which I should have talked about. Um, 
aftershock and before protest. So we've got deterioration. So that is, so after your loss and then you've gone into shock and you've got numbness, denial, outbursts and weight loss, increased shock. Then the next stage would be deterioration. So within that, you've got things like crying. I've done a lot of crying. Sorry to miss this section out. Um, loss of appetite, which, you know, results in loss of weight. Sleep disturbance, yes, quite a lot of that. Irritability, mm, yeah, sort of, but that came out as just being quiet, really. Um, Self-criticism, not a great deal. Quite a lot of reflection, um, but not necessarily self-criticism. Guilt, guilt about not spent, being able to spend t enough time, especially over the COVID situation. Um, and they said within that you've got physical symptoms. So I'm going to I'm going to put this in a different um, section. So I'm going to put this over here. Um, physical symptoms, uh, hyperventilating, so hyperventilization, difficulty swallowing, um, not really had much of that, so quite small, difficulty breathing, yeah, a few patches of sort of semi-anxiety, um, swearing, mm, yeah, quite a lot but mainly in humour, because there's a lot of humour surrounding death. Um, nausea and vomiting. A little bit of nausea causing the lack of appetite, but not any vomiting. <laughs> so here we go. Back to, so we went from deterioration to protest, um, which was down here. Uh, disorganization that's where loneliness and loss of interest comes in and then reorganization so within reorganization I'm not sure whether I'm at that stage yet but I think I'm getting there some level of reorganization I find myself going backwards into a lot of these sections quite frequently um, but reorganization is one of the um, areas that you move into on the grief wheel so reorganization trying new patterns of behavior so maybe there would be new things maybe you talk to people that you wouldn't normally talk to maybe you talk about death um, with other people that you wouldn't normally talk to or think about death um, maybe you would do things differently uh, slow down a little or think about the meaning of death, change your attitude towards it through the experience, yes. As well as that, finding the meaning in life, yes, done quite a lot of that. Um, new interests and skills so you might develop new interests and skills you might spend time with people that you didn't spend time with before develop new interests with them maybe do more things with them i went walking with my aunties and that was lovely and my uncle actually um and within that is new or renewed socialisation. So that in itself, you know, I had not walked with my aunties and uncle for, you know, many, 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 many years. So that was a lovely experience. Okay. So the final stage is deterior, uh, recovery. So even though I don't think like I'm in recovery, you know, all the things that I've been experiencing over the last month will have contributed or may have pushed me into 
a level of recovery that I'm just not aware of. So I am able to talk a little bit more. Um, so I see all these as aspects of recovery. I have been doing these paintings which have helped enormously. They've helped me talk through and reflect and um, sort of clarify. I'm putting lots of dots on here because this is quite an important part of the whole situation, this feeling of that there possibly is a recovery. I also have been listening to Griefcast, which is a podcast of comedians talking about grief and that has helped massively. Um, I'm going to move on to another one here because it's quite um, a large part of the grief wheel is this process of going through all these stages and then feeling like that you might be on that road to recovery. Like I said I'm, I don't think I am but all of the things that I'm doing to push recovery on, even though you don't have to push it on, um, are helping. Talking to a counsellor, that has been quite important. Really good volunteer counsellor that I've been talking to. Talking to my husband, talking to my daughter, Talking to myself, that's been a huge part, like massive. Talking to my sister, um, talking to my father, and also looking at how he has um, gone through this process. I can't imagine what it must be like for him being in the house where they lived together for so long that has terrified me at times. I'm going to move down here um, and talk a bit, bit more about all the things that have helped me. Um, being in my garden, just connecting with friends, Having a drink. I mean, it's just started raining. You can hear it in the background. And just listening to sounds around you. Bird song. Seeing that spring is moving along very nicely. Thank you very much. That the world is carrying on. Growing living, dying, the birds are making their nests and these these spots are quite random <laughs> um, but you know just let them be random, let them be different thicknesses, different sizes, different shapes And just put a little bit of thought into each one of these little dots. I'm going to do one. They're quite thick. Let me just do a couple more on here, a little bit weaker. Nice to have some thick and some thin. Just going to put a couple of dots on there. I'm going to dedicate one of these seed heads to my mum and I'm going to talk about memory. So let's do this one here. So it's been nice to think about mum and all the things that she loved. We've, we got, um, we adopted some puffins, so we've got four puffins, so I'll do four dots for each puffin. 
um, because she loved puffins. So we adopted some puffins on Skoma the other day. And I was thinking about walking with her through the woods and all the places that she loved. Blackburn Rovers Football Club particularly. So there's my mum. I'm going to dedicate one to Lewis, my dog. Now his shadows are everywhere. So I'm going to put a really big blob seed there for him because his shadow because he's still with me in the house and that has been that doesn't seem to be waving at all which is quite difficult I went on my first walk today without him and that was tough so strange not walking with a dog and all the memories that come with him and also what to do with his ashes okay that's one benefit of a funeral at least you don't have the ashes to to sort out the next thing um, is just general um, feelings so I've done a lot of thought thinking about people who have lost relatives friends in covid and how difficult that must have been this sort of unexpected death very tough and i also have done a lot of thinking about the nurses and the doctors so there were three nurses that dealt with mum so there they are and then lots of doctors who tried their best to save her but couldn't and what that must do to them every day I just don't know how they they deal with it so thanks to them and just generally about death and how traumatic it is we're nearly there on the last one so I'm just going to do a couple of dots for myself here so there there I am just peeking round the side hoping that this little painting will help and has helped you me whoever and whatever kind of loss you've suffered doesn't matter what kind it is how long ago it was who it was what it was but it's still a loss and I'm just going to peel this off and hopefully it won't take the paper with it and take some deep breaths you can hear <laughs> I'm still breathing deeply it's so funny like really big size there we go so those my remembrance grief wheel honesty plant i hope you like it have a go it's a really nice little painting to do quite abstract but beautiful and you know hold yourself hold your loved ones hold your friends Keep them all close and value them. Hope you feel better doing this. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.